One of the brilliant things about Italian pasta sauce is that just about every family has its own recipe. There's, I've met dozens of Italian families and they've all got their own recipe. And they're all really nice, but they're all a bit different. Which means the recipes don't get written down very much and you'll find that particularly the older generation, a handful of this and a spoonful of that and then maybe a spoonful of something else and the recipe changes every day. So this time I've actually written down and weighed everything that got put into the pot. First up, you're going to need to dice your onions. Now, you can use a sharp knife to do it, but it's much easier with a mandolin that has a dicing attachment. If you have the mandolin, for the love of God, be careful with the damn thing. They'll take bits of your fingers off as soon as look at you. Use the safety handle that's provided with it. Put your onion in the little handle and use that to run the onion up and down the, against the mandolin. If not, you will lose bits of your fingers, trust me. The great thing about a mandolin is it makes dicing onions really, really fast. You'll start with a kilo of onions and you should end up with about 750 grams of diced onions. Don't sweat it if you're out by a couple of grams here or there. It won't make a difference to the end of the end product that you come up with. Once you've finished dicing your onions, it's time to move on to the browning of the chuck steak. Now, I find it easy to get everything out in advance and ready to go, and that includes heating up the pan. That's really important when you're browning meat. If you're using uh, stainless steel, preheat your pan for about four or five minutes on high heat. If you're using cast iron, preheat it five to ten minutes on a high heat. Um, don't put oil in the pan. You oil the steak and then put the steak in the pan and that way you don't have to worry too much about splashing yourself. Certainly not with the first one anyway. Um, these steaks are quite thick so they get three to four minutes each side. You're not trying to cook them. It doesn't matter if they're raw or in the middle because they're going to spend six hours in the pot or three hours in the pot. They'll be cooked by the end of that. Um, you're just trying to put some colour. I mean technically chefs will cut on with the Maillard reaction, whatever it's called. Uh, basically the brown meat gives it a better flavour and that's what you're looking for here. Once you've done with the steaks, put them aside and let them rest in a steel bowl or a mixing bowl to collect the juices at the bottom and just let them sit there. It doesn't matter if they go cold. It's now time to wilt the onions. You're not trying to cook them. You're not trying to caramelise them. You're just basically trying to make them go opaque and slightly cooked. Um, onions are a really good declaser of a pan too, so they'll pick up all the... Um, flavour bits of the meat that got stuck to the pan and take them with them so they'll get a brown colour on them pretty quickly as soon as you start to stir them. You need to stir them around for, I don't know, it depends, somewhere between five and seven minutes and they should be fine. You're just waiting for them to start to go a little bit opaque and then you transfer them into the pot. Most of the hard work's already done at this point. You're now going to just start assembling the sauce in the pot and let it cook. So now you just grab the steaks and all the pan juices and just tip it into the pot. Uh, we'll follow that with tipping all of the tinned tomatoes into the pot and a bunch of the spices. And then you'll let time and heat do its thing.
when you're adding the water you might as well use it to wash some of the diced tomatoes that got stuck to the inside of the tin out of those tins and into your dish you've paid for the tomatoes after all you might as well use them after that it's a tomato paste two tubs of tomato paste it's about 280 grams um, and then half a tube of basil paste we'll add some fresh diced basil towards the end this basil's more for adding more balancing out flavors in the pot spice time garlic powder salt and freshly ground pepper the garlic powder pretty easy pour it in and measure measure the weight with the scales the salt pretty much the same freshly ground pepper however that's a pain in the ass I was grinding pepper for like five minutes as I think you're about to find out worth the weight though Hmm? How much have you got there? Yeah, just enough for... Yeah, just throw it all in. Eight teaspoons. 30 grams. 32 grams. Alright. Here we go. Pepper grinding at long last. I've edited about seven minutes of pepper grinding out of this. So you only have to sit through about a minute and a half of it. But honestly, feel free to fast forward until I get to the end of the pepper grinding, because I think it's going to be pretty boring. But there's a lot of grinding involved. Once you've got all the spices sorted, you can just put them in the pot and stir them in. The only things I'd recommend you don't put in this stage is the chilli and the sugar. They need a gentle hand. I don't care how hot you think you like your chilli, if you put it in now, it's going to be a lot stronger flavour when you get to the end of the process. So leave that for the last half hour or so to put the chilli in. Um, you can put the sugar in sort of whenever. Um, it, probably a half hour after you've started to cook the sauce. It's a good time to, to go with the sugar. It's just controlling the acidity. You may not need any to put any sugar in it. Uh, depends on how ripe the tomatoes were and the sugar content and blah, blah, blah. Um, but put everything in, give it a stir, whack it on the heat. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to recommend you put this on the lowest heat possible, stir it every half hour and you'll know when it's been cooked long enough because you'll be able to push the steak with the back of a spoon against the side of the pot and it will break apart, it will completely fall apart. This is the point at which you take the steak out of the sauce using your tongs or a spider if you need to, put it into a pot and then just stir the steaks with a fork and they'll all fall apart and you put that mixture back into your sauce. You're almost done at this point. This is where you add your 10 grams of pre-cut fresh basil, finely julienned or diced or chopped, however you want to put it. This is also the time to start adding your chilli. Um, if you've got a high tolerance for chilli, maybe for you it's two tablespoons, not two teaspoons like it is for me but I would really recommend add it in small quantities give it 10 minutes to cook through and then taste it because you're going to reduce the mixture towards the end by about 20% so it'll increase the power of the chilli in the sauce by about 20% so you do need to keep that in mind <laughs> 